Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If I did not plan things, nothing would happen. Hello and welcome back to The Bliss Bean. One of the most common questions I get on this channel, obviously, is how do you stop procrastinating? I don't know, but I do think that planning helps me to beat procrastination because it sort of gamifies things. I wake up each morning knowing what my objectives are and also knowing that I have limited time to complete them. So first off, what are the tools that I use for planning? The to-do app that I've been using for almost three years is to-do, but spelled in French. My preferred calendar app is iCal. I do not like the format of Google Calendar at all, but I actually still use it because it makes it easier than to sync with other Gmail accounts and invite people to events. However, on my computer, iCal is synced to Google Calendar, so I don't need to look at Google Calendar at all. I can just enjoy the far superior format of iCal, in my opinion. Then we have Apple Notes. So simple, so easy to sync, but when things get a little more complicated, and sometimes they do, we have Notion. And I know what you're thinking, Patricia, you just said three videos ago that you don't like Notion. I'm a hypocrite. No, in that video, Rowena and I agreed, and you can go watch it again if you don't believe me, that for us, Notion seems to work pretty well for work stuff where things can get super complicated, but not so much for personal planning. So let's get started with my weekly planning routine and open up Apple Notes. Apple Notes is where I have my various planning routines, my trigger list for my brain dump, do some day list, rough plan for the year, etc. So step one is to recap how the previous week went. I like to do this in my notebook book because it's tangible and analog. I feel like it helps me to think better. So some of the things I wrote for this week were what went well. I woke up at 5 a.m. every morning. I did all of my habits. Going outside every day really helped. What could have gone better? Honestly, this week, not much. It was a really good week, but I did write that because I was waking up at 5 a.m. It was hard to get enough sleep, so I was pretty tired during the day some days. After I list out the what went well and what could have gone better, I also write out how I spent my time because time tracking is something that I like to do so I can write out exactly the hours and the percentages from that week. 36 hours on work, 30 hours on life stuff, so that's like cooking, eating, showering, routines, planning, chores, errands, driving, all that day-to-day -day stuff, 14 hours on leisure, 8 on health, and 8 on learning. Next, I clear out my brain dump sticky, so I didn't mention this in the app section because it barely counts as an app, but there's this stickies app on Mac that is basically digital post-it notes, so I have one that is for things that I want to remember to share on social media, another one that's just a brain dump for completely random thoughts, and then some Notion shortcuts. So if I'm keeping on top of things, this brain dump should be almost empty when I look at it on Sunday, but I just take whatever's left on there and I turn each thought into a to-do or add it to my content ideas list. Just put it wherever it belongs so that this is once again empty. At that point, I look at my iCal calendar and see what events are coming up this week. So this is my actual calendar. I just removed some of the details for privacy. These meetings and the Spanish classes are one-time events. The exercise classes and this weekly appointment to meet at a cafe with a friend, these are repeating events. So every week when I open my calendar, I have to make some decisions. So for example, this week, I know my period is gonna start soon, so I probably should not be doing super intense exercise classes. So I think on Tuesday, I'll just go for a walk and I'll make a note of that. On Fridays, I have to decide between these two classes. So kickboxing sounds a little too intense for this week. And then my friend and I, we tentatively meet in the late mornings, but having this block on my calendar is just a reminder for me to text her and confirm at what time she actually wants to meet. So then I take all of these events that are in my calendar and I plug them into my to-do. So if you type a hashtag before whatever it is that you're writing, it turns it into this header format. So what I like to do is drag my tasks around my events to have like little milestones of when I want to get them done. Then is the part where we really start planning, okay? Are you ready? First, I look over my goals for the month. I usually don't have many, if any, but I'll just ask myself, what should I accomplish this week to make sure that I am on track to accomplish them by the end of the month? So then I look at my trigger list, and I believe this originates from the Getting Things Done system. This is a list of all of the areas of your life in which you might possibly have some tasks. So once you have this list, you can go through it one by one every week and think about what tasks and ideas come to mind. So I am going to go through this and do a brain dump in my notebook. Please hold. For 
for blogging tasks, I also check our other tasks database in Notion and I see, okay, what is assigned to me for the week of May 10th? I also take a look at the events that are on my calendar and I think, does anything need to be done around those events? So for example, for each of my Spanish classes, I wanna make sure that I have an hour the day after or in a couple of days to review that lesson. Should probably prepare my ideas for the marketing meeting and get ready for Friday's meeting. So then I make a point to ask, what can I say no to this week? Because it is called a brain dump for a reason. It is a dump. Not everything on this list is worth taking action on. So I say, okay, what can I delete because it's not that important? What can I ask my assistant to do? What can I postpone for another time? And then once that list is minimized, we are ready to time block. Before we move on, if you want to practice time blocking, I have this schedule your ideal week worksheet on my Squarespace website. That is how you do a segue, ladies and gentlemen. So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you watch my YouTube channel but have never visited my website, you are missing out. That's all I have to say. I used Squarespace to set up a home for all things Blissbean related. There is a free weekly newsletter, lots of free worksheets, links to all of my equipment if you're interested in that, my podcast, everything. Squarespace makes it super easy to build a website using drag and drop blocks for whatever it is that you do, whether it is a blog, a podcast, a online store, an art portfolio, or all of the above. I really truly love using it, that's why I've been using it for almost four years. Aesthetics are really important to me, and so with Squarespace, I can very efficiently get the beautiful website that I want, and we love efficiency here. So you can officially create your own beautiful website on Squarespace with a free trial, and then use my code, the Bean, to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. All right, did you go to the website? Did you download the worksheet? Okay, let's get started. So let me start by showing you how my to-do is set up. Tasks that are scheduled for a specific day go right under that day, Anything that is for this week but is yet unscheduled goes here, next week here, and then anything that's for even further into the future goes under this list. So everything that was for next week now becomes this week, and I type everything for my brain dump into this week. And I type over 100 words per minute, so this should take no time at all. So once it's time to schedule it, there's no definite step-by-step -step process to my time blocking. It's honestly kind of intuitive, which is probably not what you want to hear, but you have to take into account deadlines, how much available time you have, energy levels, unforeseen events. You just get better at it with practice. So let's try and time block this week. So there's a video due on Wednesday. I have not finished editing that, so for sure I need a big editing block on Monday to get that done. Let's be safe and schedule six hours for that. Along with that video, there's gonna be a newsletter and some sponsored Instagram content, so an hour and a half to put that all together. Tuesday, I said I was gonna go on a walk, so let's put that in. I wanna write my newsletter for the next week, so let's do that before video editing. 11's probably a good time for lunch. I wanted to spend three hours on taking notes on books, so that should probably wait until after I've met that deadline for the video, so maybe I can do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe. I need to write a video script. So writing work I try to do in the morning. Let's try to do that on Tuesday. I'll write the draft. Wednesday I shall edit the draft. Oh, I just realized I totally forgot to bring my calendar events into to do. So let me do that very quickly. I don't think I'll have enough energy to record a podcast and film a video in one day. Record the podcast there, film a video here, but then maybe film the B-roll the next day so I don't exhaust myself. So sometimes a time block will contain a couple of tasks. For example, this one. I like to do this when I have a couple of small tasks. I don't wanna make time blocks that are just like 15 to 30 minutes long. And so I'll just lump them together into one work session. Usually I feel pretty confident about the plans that I have for Monday and Tuesday, and then less confident about Wednesday, and then progressively less and less confident. So basically I just need clear objectives to start with, and then I can plan the rest of the week as I go. You can never predict everything that will happen during the week, so you have to have buffer time and be flexible about your schedule. But 
yeah, this is basically it. I now have a pretty solid plan for the week. I know exactly what I need to get done. I can also edit things very easily if need be by just dragging things around. Before I go, I want to leave you with one last message. Something that I need to get over is this belief that having a busy calendar is good or makes me valuable as a person. So when I opened up my iCal to show you my calendar for the week, I was like, it's kind of empty. What will people think? That I'm lazy? That I'm not booked and busy? That I'm unimportant? But the true measure of a good calendar is not how many meetings you have and not even how much work you accomplish because work is not the only goal. At the end of the week, you should feel content, healthy, balanced, fulfilled, all these good adjectives. And if the way you set up your schedule makes you feel that way, then you've succeeded. And if this video and these techniques helped you in that, then awesome. If you hate time blocking though, don't feel like you have to do it. This just works for me. If you enjoyed this video, you should also check out my how to make time for everything video where we basically filled out that worksheet with how your ideal week would look like and how you might make that work. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed that. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week. Bye!